What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today I am super excited because I finally got my hands on the new B-Link GT King. Now this is the world's first publicly available Amlogic S922 Android TV box. And in this video we're going to take a look at the hardware, then we're going to move over and test out some native Android gaming, some 4K video playback, and a few other things inside of the Android operating system that comes preloaded on the GT King. By the way, it's Android 9.0. Inside of the box, you're going to receive a user manual, an HDMI cable, the power adapter, it's 12 volts, 1.5 amps, the GT King Android box itself, and the new B-Link 2.4 GHz remote that they've been packaging with all of their Android boxes lately. This does require adapter, and it's included with the package. I do love the look of the device, and as you can see, we have a skull imprinted on the front here, and it looks a lot like the Intel skull. It's not quite there, but with the Intel skull canyon and Hades canyon, this is the skull they use on those units. Now when we're talking about a box at this price point, which is $115, it's really hard not to compare it to the Nvidia Shield Android TV, and that's pretty much what I'm going to be doing in this video. This GT King comes in at $115, and you can pick up an Nvidia Shield Android TV for about $150. The price on these S922 X boxes will drop down just like the RK3399 boxes did. The very first one that I purchased was $160. I got a video on it. It's kind of old now, but it's still same performance out of that RK3399. As time goes on and more of these chips are produced, the price will come down. And I see within a year that we'll be able to pick up these S922 Xboxes for around $60 to $70. And as it sits right now, Odroid actually makes a nice little single board computer powered by this same exact chip. And it comes in at $84.50 with a power adapter. But you got to remember, it doesn't come with storage or a remote. But there are a lot of other operating systems that can run on the Odroid N2 with the S922X in it. A cool little feature that B-Link added were these light up eyes on the skull. Now I know it's really hard to see in this picture here. It's much more vibrant in real life. It's not super bright, but you can definitely see it and they do come up green. Now it's time to dive into the specs on this little box. It's known as the B-Link GT1K or the GT King. For the CPU, we have the Amlogic S922X. This is a six core CPU, four A73 cores at 1.7 gigahertz and two A53 cores at 1.8. When comparing this to the Odroid N2, each of these cores are underclocked by 100 MHz. For the GPU, we get that new Mali G52 MP6 at 846 MHz. They do offer two variants of this device. One has 2 GB of RAM and the other has 4. I happen to have the 4 GB model here, so we got 4 GB of LPDDR4. Same thing with the storage, 32 or 64. This one has 64 GB, but we also get that micro SD card slot for expansion. Two USB 3.0 ports, one USB 2.0 port, HDMI 2.1, a 3.5 millimeter audio video jack on the back, micro SD card slot. We also get gigabit ethernet and dual band 802.11 BGN and AC so we can pick up that 5 gigahertz network along with Bluetooth 4.1. And as for the operating system, I was a little disappointed to see this, but we do get Android 9.0. Unfortunately, it's only 32 bit, so there are some 64 bit applications like the Dolphin emulator that won't even be able to install on this unit, at least at this time being. So now that we have the specs out of the way, let's go ahead and move over into the operating system. I'm going to run some of my favorite benchmarks. I'm going to test out some native Android gaming and 4K video playback. All right, so here we are at the main launcher. This is Android 9.0. We got that basic B-Link setup. This is on all of their Android boxes, as far as I can remember from Android 7 on up. We can select apps to add to the main menu. And there's one thing that everybody needs to know about these Chinese boxes. 99% of them are not going to be able to access the TV version of applications like Netflix. I've tried every version for Android TV. Will not work here. So you will be stuck with the phone version of Netflix and YouTube. I was able to get HBO Go up and running and Hulu without a hitch. They work fine. But if we go into YouTube, we're not going to get that Android TV version. We're going to have the regular old phone version or Android version of YouTube. So once again, no 4K content here. And that's something that the Nvidia Shield or even the Mi Box does. Those are kind of branded Android boxes. That's because they have the correct DRM built in that Netflix and a few other apps require to work properly. But if you're really not worried about 4K content, you can get by with something like this. 
I'm going to go ahead and open up IDA64 and make sure the specs are correct. We do have that 4 gigabytes of DDR4. For the CPU, we have that Amlogic S922X, 2 cores at 1.8, 4 cores at 1.7. And for the GPU, we have that Mali G52. It states it's a 4 core, but there's two sections to the GPU with three execution cores each. So it's basically a 6 core GPU. And unfortunately, in this version of Android, we do not have Vulkan support. So you'll be stuck with OpenGL 3.2, and that's fine if it performs well. And just to be sure, we are running Android 9.0 Pi. Now it's time to get into some performance benchmarks. Like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I will be comparing this to the Nvidia Shield Android TV. Even though the Shield is more expensive, by around $40 if you get the base model, it might be worth it if performance is that much higher. So on the GT King for Geekbench 4, single core we scored a 1,182 and multi-core 3,222. If we take a look at the shield score, we can see that multi-core is much higher, but single core really isn't that different. Now this is raw CPU performance, and really when it comes down to it, if you're doing Android gaming and video playback, GPU performance is really where it's at. So we're going to take a look at those scores also. So we'll move over to 3D Mark. I was able to run Slingshot, but like I said, this doesn't support Vulkan, so we couldn't get Slingshot Extreme, and I ran Ice Storm. Ice Storm, we scored a 19,882, and this maxes out at 20,000. So if you do hit that 20,000 mark, it'll just say maxed out, and that's what the shield does with the Ice Storm test. But Slingshot's a little bit different. We scored a 14,083. This is OpenGL 3.0. Running the same test on the NVIDIA Shield TV nets of 4,783, so we are significantly higher in GPU performance on the Shield than the B-Link GT King. I know the S10 is a very expensive phone, but it scored a 7,312. Let's go down until we find something that's similar to the score of the GT King. And it looks like we're in the same territory of the Nexus and the Moto X. So the Nexus 5X scored a 1476. So we're in the same territory as the old Snapdragon 808 CPUs were. And finally, we have the Antutu benchmark. 108,565. 44,206 on the CPU, 32,479 on the GPU. It's really not a bad score for an Android TV box, but when we compare this to the Shield, we can see just how much more powerful the Shield is in GPU performance. With a 146,939 just on the GPU and a final score of 245,552. And we still edged out in CPU and RAM performance, especially UX performance with the Shield. If the GT King wasn't a $115 Android TV box, I wouldn't compare it to the Shield, I'd compare it to something lower end. But since we're right there at the price of the Shield, it makes sense to go for the better option, even though it's a little more expensive. I also ran a quick Wi-Fi test. This is connected to my home 5 GHz network, and it's almost maxed it completely out. I'm at 400 megabits per second down and 25 up. We got 382 down and 23.3 up. So Wi-Fi on this thing is outstanding, and I'm sure Ethernet is also. Native Android games run pretty well on this. This is PUBG. I'm using my keyboard and mouse here as, uh, you know, touch sensors. I didn't want to set up any overlays because I would get banned from the game. But as you can see, PUBG is running really well on the B-Link GT King. I couldn't download Asphalt 9 from the Play Store for some reason, but this is Asphalt Rally and it works great. I'm using an Xbox One S controller connected through Bluetooth. Graphics is set to optimal and it looks and runs really well. I did run into a couple issues with Minecraft. As you can see, it's a bit choppy, and I tried turning down chunks and everything like that, but unfortunately, this is the performance I got out of it. Also using the Xbox One S controller here. Blow up some dynamite and see if the game crashes. I doubt it will. It's a little weird, um, but I am getting a lot of choppiness.
Finally, Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, everything's maxed out using that Xbox controller again. It works great here, so if you want to play any of the Rockstar games like Bully or GTA 3, they're going to perform fine on this box. Moving over to some 4K video playback, there is a built-in movie player, and I'm going to test this out first before I go to Cody, because they do recommend using this for your videos. These are all on an external 2TB USB 3.0 drive. First one I always test with these Android boxes is Big Buck Bunny. It's the 4K 60fps version. Never really been able to get it to run well on any box except for the Shield TV. And by the way, I did test this with other video players like VLC and Kodi. Still getting really bad performance with this 4K 60fps MP4 video. And that's usually what happens on most of these Android boxes. The sound is way off. Kodi performance is decent. If you want to install a build, you'll have no trouble streaming your favorite stuff, but I'm going to do some native video playback here. Like I said, that Big Buck Bunny 60 FPS performs just as bad in Kodi, so we're going to go with the 30 FPS version, and it runs fine. Real quick, we have a 1080p 30fps video. This is Jellyfish, 100 megabits per second, HEVC.MKV. Great performance. Now we want to see if we can do a higher bitrate in 4K. So I'm going to back out of here, and we're going to choose another bitrate test. This is 250 megabits per second, 4K, UHD, HEVC, 10-bit, MKV. Great performance here. It's 30 FPS, 4K, but a very, very high bit rate. So in the end, video playback is great. 720p, 1080p, 60 FPS, 4K, 30 FPS, and even some 4K, 60 FPS files will play fine in here. But you will run into some, like that big buck bunny, that just don't perform well at all. I believe it's a decent Android box, but I also think that it's a little overpriced at $115 to $130 depending on where you buy it. If these were going for $60 to $70, maybe even $80, it might be a great buy. But it's only $35 to $45 cheaper than the Nvidia Shield, and that Shield is just going to trump this in every aspect. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I really appreciate you watching. Keep an eye out on the channel because I do have a full emulation test coming up. I'm going to test some N64, PSP, Naomi, Dreamcast. I'm going to go all out with it to see how this thing does with emulation. If you're still interested in picking one of these up to see what it can do for yourself, I will leave links in the description. I'm also going to leave links to where you can buy an NVIDIA Shield Android TV. It's about $40 more, but it's well worth the money. I'd really appreciate it if you could hit that like button. And if you want to see anything else running on the B-Link GT King, just let me know in the comments below and I'll get a video made up. But like always, thanks for watching.